Hello there everyone, uh, this is Mark 3 and welcome back to From the Depths Toba. That one boaty adventure. As you can see, we still have a boat. Good on you, Toba. <laughs> so this is a little bit odd compared to the last couple of weeks when I have actually been showing up on stream with this game with Toba rather than in videos. That's just because, quite frankly, it's been a bit of a struggle to get this thing sorted out in terms of video, just with happenings in my life in general. But here I must point out one thing. Toba was never meant to be a stream game. I streamed it because I found no other option to get it out there to you guys. So, yeah, that's how it became streamed these last few weeks. And I'm going to try to return it to its video origins. Because, quite frankly... Mm, actually, I don't know why I said quite frankly, but it's, you know, it's like... Mm, mm, mm. Me use wordy things, me schmerty person. Yes, 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 indeed, that is exactly it. I don't know, it, it cuts out a lot of the more boring stuff and wandering around trying to find things, you know? At least... Supposedly that's what it does, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know a lot, apparently. But, but also, I, I do know there was a slight lag spike there, which means there is an enemy. And it is somewhere over that way. Oh, just as I was on my way to get this resource zone as well. Oh, well. Mm. Anyway. Where is Toba going? Uh, the particle cannon that I started in the, end, in the last stream is still operating at half strength, so that is one thing that he's doing. There is also finishing the bridge, and the craft needs a bit of a tune-up in general, but it really is about time the craft was starting to get put on some weight, you know? Starting to get a bit larger, starting to grow. Because, um, while it's all fine now, it's got its slender, narrow profile and all that, it is not exactly in its final form. It's not even its final form. Ha ha ha. This is not my final form. No. This is meant to be like um it's it's like a it's like I said in Dak Adventure, as that other adventure mode is now called. The craft is supposed to be growing organically as time goes on. And I do prefer it doing that way instead of one big perfect build. And honestly the, as you know the bottom of this craft is entirely made of wood. Not exactly the most durable material, but that's because it was always intended to grow downwards and outwards, as well as uh, getting longer, which has frankly just been the easy way to do it until this point. It's just like slap some more on the back and hopefully it will not sink under its own weight. <laughs> it's not sunk yet, but you know. Anyway, enough of the bambling and saying yada yada yada. Let's let this enemy get engaged. Yes, indeed. A vast ye scurvy dog. I just flew out to see what it was that was approaching, because it seemed to be taking a little while. And, surprise, surprise, it's one of the sailing craft which is currently broken. <laughs> doing its best impression of, um, I, don't, I don't know what it's doing an impression of, really. Pulling a wheelie, I think is probably the best way to put it. Do you have propellers on the back? Oh, you do. That's what's actually kicking you up. Hmm. Yeah, sailing craft is still very, very broken. Oh dear. Oh well, it's going to get close enough sooner or later for me to actually take it on, but until then, it's going to take a while, isn't it? Jeez. <laughs> oh, oh, I should also mention, I, pl I want to get better anti-air systems and things installed as well in this video. So, it won't be on the scale as of the massive um, sod-off-and-go-away laser system that you might have seen in DAC Adventure if you were watching that. Like, you know, massive burst of laser fire on anything that gets too close. I'm going to try to make a more compact and efficient system. I think it's probably the best way to put it. So, yeah. I'm going to see what I can do with that. Oh, really? I don't believe it. <laughs> I literally... The first couple of shells of the 200mm just spat out. I slowed the time down to go and take a look-see, and I don't know what happened here. 
Um, hmm. <laughs> Seriously, I, I wanted to be over here when the shells started flying, so that's why I hit slow down. But it's literally dead the first second. I think... Well, I saw an EMP burst go off. Um, yeah, there's an EMP burst still rolling around in here. Oh, I... I really? I think I just detonated a cram cannon. Yeah, it looks it looks like I detonated the cram cannons on the side and triggered an EMP burst which killed the ship's AI. Huh. Well, what do you know? How strange is that? That was rather unexpected. Oh well, uh, might as well just let it go boom then. Because it's uh, dead, so there it goes. I was hoping for more of, more of a fight with you, to be honest. I am disappointed by this outcome. Very much so. But it has dropped 2009. Oh. Never mind, it was actually my EMP particle can. I didn't even notice that it, it had fired. <laughs> oh, that, that thing just snipes it. Hmm. I really should pay more attention to you, shouldn't I? Once again, here comes another thing. Which apparently I just clipped because it said I don't think... Oh jeez, incoming rapid fire stuff. Reflect shield. Oh, there goes an EMP and... Are you dead already? Darn it. <laughs> oh dear. No, it's not dead apparently because everything's still shooting at it. But that EMP particle cannon is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, wow. Well. I, I didn't realise how dangerous it would be. I'll, I'll confess, I never really use particle cannons, but you're a cool-looking helicopter, aren't you? Shame you're also kind of crippled by me burning out half of your control systems. Oh, jeez, that's another massive EMP burst coming in. Uh, don't know what you were shooting at there with that one, but uh, apparently you missed, so... <laughs> Oh dear, and then that was worth an extra 818. Mm, goodbye, Mr. Helicopter. Oh dear. I think that was 818, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that is the right one, yes. <laughs> Honestly, how many red X's can you have on a map? I have no idea because... That's the problem with long-range guns, sometimes you'll miss them. So I was wondering if that was something else. Seems about right, though. Anyway, that particle cannon is an absolute beast against smaller targets. Hmm. No wonder people were so insistent I put it on. <laughs> I am honestly thinking I need to say goodbye to the uh, this second missile system I installed. Yeah, I'm going to say goodbye to it. I mean, it's really interesting at all. And all, it's like it's got the uh, recessed bays in it. It's got it's the reverse launch missile system, which is pretty rare. But, let's be honest here, yeah, let's be honest here, it's not very good, is it? When all is said and done, it's not very good. <laughs> I sound like such a killjoy when I say that. Um, but yeah, it barely gets used, it's has a few problems misfiring. I, by the way, I worked out how to solve that, but um, the fact is that it's just not that good. Not very useful, so yeah. I'm, I'm also slightly irritated by the fact that the uh, lasers... This, is why, th this, by the way, is why I don't use laser emitters much. People have often said, hey, you should use a laser emitter on XYZ missile and stuff like that, and I've never really said why, have I? Why I don't tend to think of like, ooh, let's put a laser on that by default. Even though it's a really, really good thing to have in a missile launcher. The truth is, I just actually hate the, the emitters rather than the actual la mis laser based missile system itself. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I mean, uh, I'd be just fine using laser guided missiles. In fact, they're very versatile. I, I acknowledge that. They are very good. But that darn emitter just won't turn off. There we go. That's the problem. The darn emitter just won't turn off. 
and that is why I don't tend to like using them. If the laser would disappear, I'd be fine with it. If the laser only turned up when it was targeting someone, I'd be fine with it. But I just don't I don't like having those lasers constantly on pointing in whichever direction the missile launcher's last shot in, you know? It, I find it distracting from the actual vehicle itself, which I'd much rather be looking at. And having those things just randomly drawn on it, it's like, what is this thing? Did someone scribble on the image or something? It's like, you know, it doesn't look like it fits. At least not to me. Maybe I'm just being picky. I'm a very, very picky person at heart. Picky, picky, picky. <laughs> ah, well. But that's cleaned up a bit. That's cleaned up um, some of the detailing off the top, unfortunately. But it's also given me um, more internal space to work with because, well, you know, internal space is sometimes a, a bit of a premium, isn't it? Mm, there's a small resource zone somewhere around here, I think. Oh, well. Plus, it gives me room to use it for something else, too, which is also good. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, I've actually taken out the warning light from where it was between all the missile systems, so that's why that's disappeared. I've actually mounted it into the sides of the big tower going up on top of the craft, so that's where that's gone. And the light just gets steadily lower as the enemy gets closer. So that way I have a, something of an indication of where the enemy is as well. But yeah, that's just there so I can see it on the sides of the craft more than anything else. That's what happened to that. Okay then, I have a space I'm going to use. Uh, let me turn off my AI for a moment. Switch, switch back to combat mode, please. Taking control. I mean, the nav AI won't mess things up too much. Seeing as it just loves to fail to steer. Ooh, look, there's something moving over there. Okay, never mind. Looks like we've got some combat going on instead. <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll just park here for a second and then flit out and see what we've got. Are you harvesting? Yes, you are harvesting. Okay, I'll just park there. Unlatch and fly, because I'm pretty sure I know where the enemy is, to be quite fair. Oh, look, they're dropping torpedoes way out of range. Their detection really sucks. Also, one of them's dead. <laughs> wow, that was kind of fast. What are you guys? Oh, hello. It's like... It's a uh, white flare. No, no, not white flare. They are... Um, Steel Legion? I, I, I'm always a bit shaky on the names of stuff I've not really gone against, you know? Yep, I think that one's dead, thank you. Which leaves their mother craft, actually, this one. Oh, that, that actually looks pretty cool. Wow. Okay. Are you done harvesting? You are. Okay, let's move up a bit closer then. Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. Shame it just got hit by the particle cannon, though. Well, that, that's going all over the place, isn't it? Wow. 9,000 odd electric damage, and it's still in the air. I actually look somewhat impressed. Oh, jeez. Well, that was an EMP missile swarm. That didn't look too good. There's an explosion. That also didn't look too good. <laughs> You're taking a few moments to go down, aren't you? Who's a good little flying fan, I think? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, watch the glow of the EMP. Yep, there we go. It's actually dead now. And there's, th there's another enemy, actually, I've just noticed down there. Right, you're dead. Good. Uh, you're... I think you're... you're you are a... a white flayer. I'm pretty sure. No, you're Scarlet... Wait. The red's throwing me. Are, are you? No, you are Scar Scarlet Dawn, yeah, you're it's the red and pink. Scarlet Dawn, definitely. Ooh, that's a lot of frag missiles, but they didn't... They just flew straight past me. What? Well, apparently I've got a few materials around here I need to pick up. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, well. More resources for me, then, I guess. That's like... Another 5,000 resources roughly here, I think. Lovely. Very, very nice. 
Anyway, um, Listening. while I tell the AI to go and, up and fly with the try and pick this stuff up, with it's going to mess up probably. Back to what I was saying before I got so rudely interrupted. I've got a cavity back here, right, which uh, I'm thinking of using for the anti for the anti air laser. What's under here? An RTG. All right, leave that. Uh, that's fine. But yeah, I'm, I've just got this hollow here in the armour in front of the tower, and I'm going to use this one, I think, for the point defence anti-air laser. It's not going to be very powerful, like a couple of thousand power, something like that. So it's pretty weak, but it, it, it'll knock out smaller aircraft without any trouble. That's what I'm really aiming for. I was actually experimenting a bit... Um, outside in in just in random designer and I, this is what I decided to do with it so since apparently there's no longer an efficiency difference in um, having smaller or larger things let's go ahead and get this out here because I'm gonna put it like here I think that's as far as it'll go then it's going to be uh, lasers yeah, then, then I'll, I'll build it up out of frequency doublers for the moment. Is that it? Uh, no, it goes out as far as the edge of the hole. Right, there we go. So there we go, lots of frequency doublers. And because I want this to be more efficient, I'm going to use couplers and Q-switches because they have a higher sustained damage output on a limited power source. I can now take out that. So there we go. Lots of frequency doubling. And now I'm going to include the laser cavities. Let's make this a 3,200 horsepower laser. That's one inside. That is one inside. That's that's going to give it a 3,200 horsepower. Then let's um, yeah, just move it a bit narrower. It doesn't. It doesn't. With, in such a low low power laser, 3,200, all you need to get the most out of it is a single storage cavity in the middle. Then it's got all of these laser laser doublers to give it, you know, all the power it could de desire. Well, in terms of piercing power, anyway, it's going gonna, it's gonna to punch holes in things, let's put it that way. Yep, you're connected, and you are connected. Of course, this does mean to actually have this thing operational, I require a better power core, but I've been needing that for a while anyway, so that's absolutely fine. There we go. So that's that's that that's it. A really, really compact laser. Except for how long it is with the doublers and things. So yeah, that's that. And that is actually um, a 3,500 pulse with 125 armor piercing at 10 kilometers of range. And that's enough engine power pumping into it to actually sustain that as well. This thing will sustain at about 2,200, 2,300 damage a pulse on a Q1. And 125 AP means it's going to go straight through things. So small aircraft, pff, they're going to evaporate to this thing in a couple of a couple of strikes, actually. Anything heavier, eh, might, take a, might, might take a few knocks, but it's going to cause some serious pinpoint damage. And that is to act as my anti-air weapon system. Close range anti-air is going to be this guy right here. Of course it means I'll need to have um, dis I need to distribute the, powers of the laser power along the ship so that can't be helped. But I can just use a couple of transceivers and I'll get power wherever I want it to be. But yeah I thought you guys might find that a bit interesting. Uh, AI. Out, out. It, it wants to go down here moving for whatever out, reason. Out, no, go out, that way you idiot. Out. Why do why you want it to go that moving way? Out. Do you think you need a big turning circle or something? I'm, I'm guessing that's the problem, isn't it? You think you need a big turning circle, don't you? <sighs> a boat builder's job is never done in from the depths. Really. I really don't know if this is worth mentioning, but uh, this is the... Um, this is the oh-so-complicated inner workings of the new anti-air laser turrets, which is about to go in. Let's actually do some test firing it for you. It's so utterly complex and 
strange. It's unreasonable to think that anyone will ever understand this thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you took me seriously on that, then wow. <laughs> Just wow. But yeah, it's a um, really darn small, compact central system. It's um, 0.5 degree inaccuracy, so it's really not that overly accurate. Well, by laser standards, anyway. It's decent cannon standards, but it's not meant to engage outside of about 500 meters, so it doesn't matter. Then if I click it up, yeah, it just goes pew, basically, and that's all it does. Pew! 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 So yeah, it's doing that. But while it does that, as you can see, it's, I was actually um, slightly misremembering things, because it's actually hitting 3,200 uh, per pulse at 125 AP. So this thing is going to ga go straight through even heavy armour. And that's on a 3,200 horsepower laser. Not too bad at all, really, is it? But yeah, and, and unfortunately that's also just running on, on a single core. So if I want to maintain that kind of damage output I uh, and across multiple lasers, I would have to multiply the number of cores or just flat out boost the laser power. But there's a light, short range anti-aircraft defense... Yep, this thing, this one will work, I do believe. Anyway, let's actually get this thing finished. That might be an, also a good idea. Oh my, it seems something has stuck up on me while I was finalising this thing. It's um, not really very tough. It's not meant to be. But, uh, it should have a decent range of movement if I go up. Can, how far can you tilt? Yep, you can tilt all the way, good. Okay, so it has full range of movement, which is what it needs. And it looks quite distinctive as well, which I, I like to. I've increased the size of it a bit, I've added some extra bore to it. It's a tiny bit less accurate because I added a steering optic rather than just a plain old regular optic to it. Because, you know, that is less actually latch onto the boat so I can keep moving towards my target. But as you can see, I've, I've worked in some. Um, Piping, go for some wavefronts and some high or cannon pieces. Just do that. Then there's a bit of metal forming a hoop on the top, which is a bit odd. I'm not sure I'm going to keep that, but it all looks a bit more like a, a steampunky style thing, you know? Like it's some kind of steampunk energy weapon. Now it's just helping out against this thing. I'm not doing too badly. It, it looks like a, a lot of my other stuff is just bouncing off right now. Okay, let's, let's unlatch it and have a look. Yep, it's white flare, so of course my kinetics aren't doing anything. But the laser is actually not too bad at doing something about it, so yeah. Yeah, the, that, that, the laser was definitely doing something there. Of course, the problem is that the laser systems are kind of bulky in general. So, actually, if I take that off, does that look better? Mm, yeah, yeah, sort of. Hmm. I don't know. I think the, the particle cannon pieces are actually messing up the design a little bit. Let's swap that out to regular piping, like that. Okay, that looks alright-ish. Um, th this thing is very exposed though, I must admit that. But, there's a big but here, uh, but it looks like an added weapon system. Because one of the things about Toba is that it's not really got much in the way of an aesthetic of sorts. So I've been thinking that maybe I, it's time I added something like that. And this is a, a start, isn't it? Starting to, to take this series in its own way rather than just completely streak, sleek and streamlined and experimenting with a different aesthetic. I think this is actually going to be my laser turret now. So yeah, that, that looks kind of like it's um, some odd thrown together contraption which is built just to hold off the invader. 
So let's uh, save the sub object as the uh, da -da -da, um, Toba A um, CIWS laser. Okay, technically, it is. It's, it's a closely weapon system. So let's do that. Then delete it. I believe the connection is right under here. Yes, it is. Okay, and mount it like that. And another one on this side, like that. So there we go, we've got a couple of um, stylized close range lasers going in there. Yeah, they do look slightly weird, but they, you know, can't have everything, can we? There's nothing wrong with weird. Because, let's face it, I'm a weird person. <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to add firing restrictions, but these two lasers by themselves are going to be a decent addition to my anti-aircraft and anti-small ship firepower. In about 500 meters, these things p pulse hard enough to just punch through lighter craft without any trouble. And heavy armor won't stop the blast either, which is just a bonus, really. I'm also thinking I should get rid of these forward guns too. And replace them with something else. I mean, those, these, this, the 200 millimeter auto is now technically a signature weapon of the Daka Venture craft, even though it was built for Toba first. So, I get the feeling I should try to replace it with something else. Maybe a cram cannon. Hmm. Oh, geez, incoming lasers. Okay, right. Laser reflected shields armed. Turn off. Taking control. That. So we've got Lightning Hood coming in, I think. Yep, yep, Lightning Hood. Okay, let, let's see how it likes this. Unfortunately, my lasers aren't actually functional yet, which is a shame because it looks like I've got an aircraft. Actually, let's, let's quickly do that. Yeah, so this is the problem of um, doing the recorded version, of course. You will get things which like to say howdy doody, and don't care if you're recording or trying to build or something. So, hmm. Oh, that's one of the drawbacks of doing it this way, isn't it? Okay, you're set to zero. Is that your set? Yep, you're set. Okay. So that'll prevent you from firing inwards on the boat. Let's get you set up the same way, but on the opposite side, which means I need to do you, I think. There we go. Turret sorted. Except for the fact that they, of course, need, um, you know... On local weapon controllers. Oh, good, my cannon's woken up. Yes, there's something coming. In case you didn't notice. Max range of 500. Max range of 500. I will get you guys set up. Um. Don't need a failsafe because you're not really configured that way. Actually, might as well. I don't know. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and just slap on the wireless so that it, these tr turrets will become available should I need them. Which I might actually because this is a lightning hood craft. Anyway, while we're still slow motioned, let's go out and see what we're up against. Whatever it is, it's wandering in. It's not happy with me, is it? I don't recognise this one. Probably f faced it before, but looks like it's got some pretty big. Are those turret mounted? No, they're not. Oh, why? Why has that thing got hydrofoils in it? Is that meant to be a boat? I don't know. Oh, those things are turreted. I can see them shifting. Regardless of, yeah, they're shifting. Those are turrets. Oh, jeez. Okay, let's um. On this, it's like hello. I'm turning to face you. My pilot cannon's finally woken up as well. That's absolutely fine. Uh, where is it even shooting? Actually, it's not. Oh wait, I've lost. A, I've lost one of my shields on the side. I think I did. 
Oh, and it's dead. I think the particle kind of got it. <laughs> yeah, look, look at that massive turret. Really nicely done, that, actually. But yeah, there you go. And that was worth a, like a thousand or two. Oof. Anyway, I was working on just widening out this entire thing. You know? Just, uh, you know, just make this... Starting to create a larger section of the hull around the bridge area. Which I have actually got an idea for. And I've marked it out on the back. But I mentioned this craft was going to get bigger, so I was just starting to do that to increase its size, internal volume, yada yada. Give it more space. And for the moment, it's, it's getting um, more sloped armour, but I will actually go back and customise this later. At least that's the uh, general idea. So it's not going to stay like this. It's going to get... Um, detailed. Yeah, that's the word, detailed. I'm going to detail it. See me making the air marks. Detail! The greatest thing in the galaxy. Ah. Unless it happens to you, in which case you would probably call it a fashion makeover or something. Wh whatever. Yeah, a fashion makeover against your will is probably a good description for it. But yeah, as you can see, it's starting to widen out. And I'm planning to bring back the tower into this area. So we're going to have the tower getting thinner, like this, and that's going to still provide plenty of internal space for whatever systems I decide to throw in there, but it's going to make the entire craft give it, give it a more streamlined, swept back appearance. But it's thickest at the front where the heavy weapon system is, in the form of the particle turret, and then it gets narrow towards the back. At least that's the um, general plan for this part of the ship. Of course it means the craft is going to get longer, but you know, it's an evolving craft. It, it's going to get longer. And besides, I need somewhere to slap in emergency boosters and things, which I was thinking of doing, but I actually forgot to do. So, good job there, me. Very well done. But yes, regardless. Oop, uh, let's actually go and get that boosted up there so we know where that is. There we go. But regardless of that, I'm afraid that with that fight over, it is now the end of the video. Uh, this has been I Am Mark 3. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And I hope you're okay with this return of Toba to its root and its intended kind of quote-unquote style. You know? Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all some other time. See you all later. Hmm. I think I'll integrate that into that section, actually. Yeah, that, that, that'll probably work. Integrate it. Downslope two meter blocks, like that. Yeah, that, that'll mesh quite well. You just need to get this part out here. Sorry. I, I said that video's over, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that, that looks all right. That looks all right. I just need to tilt it like that. No, that that's not quite the same. Leave it straight. That way you've got this indentation forming towards the base of the tower. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. Anyway, yeah, end of video. <laughs> see, see you all later. I hope you don't mind that. This is why I tend to take out building hull and stuff like that. Even if people have said sometimes that um, they'd like to see more building, um, it's because I just spend so much time doing it. And I keep adding stuff, like right now, so yes. End of video. For realsies this time. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, seriously, end of video. For, for ultra realsies. Mega realsies. It's looking pretty nice like that, actually. <laughs> yeah. See you all later.